chapter number 5. I noticed, uh, actually yesterday on the internet, on our website where we have the uh, Bible studies archived on the web on the web page, that the Ezekiel studies, and I I, I don't do this, so I, I don't know exactly why it's done, but I, I just, I'm going to say this for folks who are to watch. This is we're going to study chapter five tonight. This is the eighth study in in Ezekiel. On the website, last week's study was was Ezekiel seven. Now, when I read that, I thought that, that should have been chapter 7 in my mind, but it was lesson 7. It was chapter 4. And usually on the website, we put, like you put Ezekiel, it'll be chapter 5, verse 1 to 17, which is what I hope to do tonight. I've been trying to do a chapter a week. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. But it means you've got to go over a bunch of stuff. But as, as we're moving through, it, it, because when we get further in Ezekiel, we won't be able to do that. But in these first chapters, it's okay. But I'm just saying, so if, you, if you're looking on the website, you'll have to know, until they get it fixed, I'll get the guys to, to correct the, the titles as, uh, so they have the verses in it, just so that you know, if, if you go look or if the folks on the Internet look, you know, it'll say that the title isn't going to be what's in the, the what, what the verses would go over. It's going to be the, the uh, lesson number until we can get that fixed. So I just give you a heads up about that. Somebody asked me about it this week. They're kind of confused. It's not hard to figure out. You turn it on and start talking about chapter 4, and it's obviously not chapter 7, but uh, they're, they're wondering what, what, what did they miss. So, Okay. All right, Ezekiel chapter number 5. Th- this chapter in Ezekiel, is, it's a rough chapter, i got to tell you. Uh, there are a lot of things. Ezekiel starts out very bold. And uh, th- this, this is... Uh, this is a this is a chapter that, that devolves into some really uh, strict and tough uh, verbiage and, and things as he explains. The first part of the chapter, chapter four, last week we saw these these various signs that, uh, that Ezekiel did, the, the little role play, and you know he's uh, builds the city and do, does the little chalkboard thing, and then he then he has he lays on one side, then he lays on the other side, and does all these, and there are signs. And they're, he's portraying to, to the people in captivity, where he's at, what's going on back in Jerusalem. And the, the, the second siege, Nebuchadnezzar's come in, he's, he's took away a group to Babylon, Daniel and that group. Then he came back again sometime later, and he takes away another group of people, sieges the city, but he doesn't destroy it. And this is when Ezekiel and the people that he's dealing with here are in captivity. And then there's going to be another siege. And every time he, Nebuchadnezzar would come and leave some, everybody would say, oh, okay, it's over, we're, we're okay, we're never going to get taken out of Jerusalem. And what Ezekiel is saying to the people in, in, in captivity is that, no, it's not over, we're, they are all going to go out, it, they're all gone. And it's, it's, uh, the, the captivity is not finished, and we are going. That fifth course of judgment, Leviticus 26, is we're going to be scattered among the nations. And so he's given, start with, the, the signs Israel is a sign nation. They start out, you know, with, with, that, with Moses. God tells Moses, go tell, you know, uh, Pharaoh, let my people go, and, and Israel to follow him. And Moses said, well, how are they going to know? You've got to give me a sign so they know it's, that you sent me. And the nation starts with signs. It lives with signs. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1 that the Jews require a sign. And so when judgment's going to come, and you're at the point now, and you're going to see in this chapter, that God is through messing around. He's through appealing. He's through trying to get Israel to shape up. Judgment's on the way. And there's not going to be any more pity, any more mercy. It's, it's over with. Nothing but judgment's coming. The opportunity for you to get right, you know, has, uh, you, you've, you, you've gone past that. So he, in, in chapter 5, there's one more sign. And it's the first, first uh, uh, four verses. And then beginning in verse 5 to the end of the chapter, he's going to, verbally explain what these signs are about. And when we get into that part of it, it's going to get, it gets kind of thick, kind of heavy. Verse number one, Thou son of man, take thee a sharp knife. Take thee a barber's razor. Some of us had our hair cut out there, you know, Joanne's cutting hair uh, every other Wednesday night. So, you know, some of us, some of us don't need it, but some of us need, need a haircut every other, <laughs> every, other, every other Wednesday night. And uh, but this is a bar in Israel. 
the priests were not to have the hair cut. Come back with me to Leviticus, the book of Leviticus. Uh, it's important to kind of understand what's going to, what, what's going to, when he tells Ezekiel, and you remember Ezekiel is a priest. Ezekiel is not just any, any, anybody. He, he, he's, he's a prophet, but he, he's a priest. And th- there's something very special in this, in this sign. And you're going to get these concluding signs, uh, you know, the, these visual demonstrations of the, of the, of the destruction, the desperation uh, that, that's coming upon the nation. And they're going to lose their homeland. They're going to lose their, their city. They're going to lose the temple. They're going to be scattered. And then he's going to explain with, this, with, with a real powerful discourse why that is. So the last sign in chapter, chapter 5 is this sign of them being expel, expelled from the land. And he starts out with a haircut. Now the hair in the thing is going to represent the people. And then he tells Ezekiel, who is a priest, the nation Israel is a kingdom of priests, okay? So he's going to represent his people. It says, go, get, a hair, get, your hair, get your head shaved and your beard cut off. Okay, now my wife often tells me, she, I like a clean shaven man. Okay, some people do, some people don't. But in Israel, the priest wasn't, that, that's something the priest wasn't supposed to do. It's a shameful thing. And the priest loses his identity and his status in, 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 in able to function in a priesthood. Leviticus chapter uh, 21. Verse number 15. And you'll notice that the chapter begins, The Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priest, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them. He's going to give them instructions. One of the instructions is in verse number 15. Neither shall he profane his seed among his people. Well, that's not the verse I was looking for. Verse five. five. Here you go. Thank you, sir. I had half of it right. I just had, a one, I had too many ones. Verse number five, they shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. So they're not to shave their head and not to shave their beard. In fact, their beard was not to be, not to be trimmed at all when they had it. They just let it, let, let it grow with a hither, hither and yon. And when he tells Ezekiel here, uh, shave it off. It's a sign of, of the nation Israel losing their, their status as priest, as priest. There's some judgment coming on the nation Israel here. So 5.1, take the, a, 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 a barber's razor, cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Now, then take the balance to weigh and divide the hair. So you cut the hair off, then you, you gather it up, and then you put it in a balance, and you weigh it. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city. Now, the city is chapter 4, verse 1. Thou also, son of man, take thee a tile, and lay it before the, the, thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. So you think of what's happened here. Jeremiah has, he, he, he builds this little model city, and they have the sign there. And then for 390 days, he, he lays on one side, 40 to, so over a year and several months, he's, his hair has been growing, his beard's been growing, he's going out there every day doing this stuff. And now at the end of that time period, he says, okay, shave your beard, shave, shave your head, take the hair, and divide it into three parts. Weigh it. Take one part, verse 2, thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. Thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife, and a third part thou shalt scatter to the winds, and I will draw out a sword against thee. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirt. Then take them again and cast them into the midst of the fire, Thereof shall the, uh, and burn them in the fire, for thereof, th- thereof shall a fire come forth into the house of Israel. 
So what he does, he takes a third of them and he and he puts them in this. He burns them with fire. puts them, the city's going to be the city's going to be destroyed and all the people in it. When the days of the siege fulfill. By the way, the third, the three parts, there are three sieges against Israel, and each one of them, they're they're, they're being destroyed. That should take a another third part, and and smite it with a knife. So you take that that group of that part of the hair, you put it on the table, and you go <laughs> chop, 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 chop it all up. He's going to destroy them. And the other third part, you take it, you, you whoosh, scatter it to the wind. That is a picture of what's happening in each one of the sieges. Now, the interesting thing in verse verse four, then take them, then, then take of them again and cast them into the midst of the fire. I'm sorry, verse three. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirt. So he says, before you get rid of all of them, just get a, just get a little bunch of them and take them, bind them up in your handkerchief and you know, take your shirt, get your shirt tail out, bind them up in the, and, 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 and stick, them in your, stick them under your belt. Save them. That's going to be a picture of the remnant. There's always going to be a believing remnant among the unbelieving majority. So you've got that remnant, but you notice he says in verse 4, then take them, that is the remnant, and cast them into the midst of the fire and burn them in fire. The remnant's going to go through the same kind of casting away. They're going to be cast, they're going to go into captivity too. Just because the believing remnant is there and believing, the nation is destined for scattering among the nations. So even though there's a remnant, there's a little flock they're still going to be cast among the nations. The fire, the sword, and the scattering are all a picture of, of, of the treatment that is going to happen to the nation, uh, the, 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 of what's going to happen to them. If you come back with Leviticus 23, I'm sorry, 26, all of this is predicted. All of, there's nobody that, that, that Ezekiel is talking to that doesn't know what, what is, what is, what, what's happening here. This is all something that's clearly laid out in the Scripture for them. The fire, the, 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 uh, the destruction, the consuming, um, the fate of those people in Jerusalem, the, the, the sword. If you get Leviticus 26 and Isaiah chapter 7, the sword, when he talks about that, he, that's talking about Nebuchadnezzar. That's talking about the, the, the armies who are going to come in and take them. If you look at Isaiah chapter 7, Talking about uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, and how they were they were taken away. Isaiah chapter seven, verse twenty. And in the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. So the same picture is, is used of the, of, the, of the northern kingdom going off into captivity. And the sword was Assyria, Sennacherib. Now Babylon is coming in and going to take the southern kingdom and take them away. And it's going to be the same. And the sword, the, 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 the government of the Gentiles are going to come in and, 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 and take them away. And that issue of the sword is repeated down through this chapter and, all, and on through Ezekiel in, in, in numerous places. And it always represents, here come the Gentiles to get you. Leviticus chapter 26. And again, Leviticus 26 is a pre-written moral history of the nation Israel. You can actually take the history of Israel uh, from, from the time of the book of Judges all the way through to the second advent and, and find it laid out here in Leviticus 26. There are blessings that come when they keep the covenant. The first 13 verses. Then verse 14, if they don't hearken, if, if you, verse 15, despise my statutes and your soul abhor my judgments, then so that you will not do all my commandments 